Somebody's dealing with their past, and the reason you're not living in freedom and a transformative life is because of your past. You're worried about it coming out. You're worried about somebody knowing about it. You're worried about what, what you did or didn't do, whatever. I don't know. But if you're free from your past, just let it come on up. Let everybody know about it so you can rejoice what God saved you from. That's freedom. If you're saved, everybody saved in this room? Okay, then don't worry about your past. Don't worry about your past. Your past actually should be a reminder to thank God of what he saved you from. When your past comes up, you should use that as, as like your calendar going off. Oh, shoot, there's my Oh, I get to worship Jesus because look what he saved me from. Oh, what time is that? Oh, is that my past? Oh, he saved me from that. Oh, what is that? Is that a reminder? My past, all of my failures, the things he paid for. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you for delivering me from that stuff. Now, the reason that we don't do that is because we're still ashamed of it, which means if there's a shame attached to it, we haven't given it up. And if you haven't given up your past, the devil is going to torment you for the rest of your life. It's connected to embarrassment because and shame because you still think that you were a good person and so you're embarrassed of your past do you know that was my biggest struggle because I was the best Christian I knew I've never been drunk I've never done drugs and I have very few promiscuous experiences before marriage I came in when my parents told me to come in I didn't cuss y'all I didn't cuss I probably said like five cuss words in my life and it was I was like practicing by myself when I was little. Anybody ever done that? Okay, I'm sure everybody has. Nobody wants to admit it because y'all are really good Christians. But I was a good Christian. I did, I did pretty much what my parents told me to do when they told me to do it. I was a good example. I prayed before I ate. I prayed before games. I didn't stay out late. Do you know that that was the biggest problem for me is the moment I stubbed my toe, my goodness went out the window. So I was so ashamed of even a little bitty sin. Not even a sin. I was ashamed of not even looking the part. I think sometimes that's harder to be delivered of than like deep, 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 deep issues. So if that's you, why don't you just be free of that? If Jesus is your Lord, who cares? Everybody's got dirt, just in case you're wondering. Is there anybody perfect in here? No, so you're not alone. That's fine. If Jesus was here, he'd be the only one. I am. Lord, I thank you for the fire that you've put in your people tonight. God, I thank you for the fire that you have put in your people tonight. And Lord, just like a real fire, when it starts to get low, we are the ones that are to, are to put logs on it. We are the one that are to keep it going. So I pray, Lord, that we continually put the fuel on the fire. And we do that by pursuing you, loving your word, and keeping your commands. So Lord, stoke that fire tonight. For those that, those that have a fire that's starting to go out, just stoke it right now.